The U.S. men's national team are in dreamland. The nation won the 2023 CONCACAF Nations League, winning the tournament for a second time in a row. But for the first time ever, the nation has won three straight CONCACAF titles. But sadly, that hasn't been the biggest headline for them. In one of the most head-scratching decisions, the U.S. Soccer Federation has announced the return of Greg Berhalter. So in today's video, I want to discuss what are the U.S. men's national team doing rehiring Greg Berhalter? And if this was the right decision or not to do so, so. Back in 2018, the U.S. men's national team were at rock bottom, failing to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. Everyone knew there needed to be changes to this national team from the ground up, because who can forget what Taylor Twelman said? What are we doing? This what are we doing? In December of 2018, former Columbus Crew head coach Greg Berhalter was hired as the U.S. MNT head coach. It was a bit of a rough start for him, where we saw Mexico slap up the U.S. men's national team 3-0 back in September of 2019. But as the good old saying goes, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. There was a lot of criticism surrounding Greg Berhalter during the beginning of his tenure, but he found his footing and I felt the tipping point was in the 2021 CONCACAF Nations League. Winning his first trophy for the national team and getting his first win against Mexico with a performance that produced this iconic moment from Christian Pulisic. Then the US men's national team went on to win the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup, beating Mexico yet again in the final thanks to a late Miles Robinson goal. Not to mention they won that tournament taking a B-team rock. Oster. This had people thinking that Greg Berhalter could actually be the right man for the job. Well, for a small majority of people. Even with the domestic success, all of that didn't matter if he couldn't qualify this nation for the 2022 World Cup because that is what haunted these fans and players the most. This was the first big hurdle Greg Berhalter had to jump. There were some bumpy moments in the road, drawing to El Salvador, not being able to beat Canada, but with some great results which included not losing to Mexico all through qualifiers, Greg Greg Berhalter was able to help this nation qualify for their first World Cup since 2014. Optimism was high for the U.S. men's national team going into this tournament after not participating in the previous one and it felt good to be invited back to the big dance. And maybe the U.S. men's national team fan base were getting their hopes a little too high. With all the success Greg Berhalter has had so far, it seemed he was able to gain the trust of this team after leading them to back-to-back -back trophies and qualification to the World Cup. But one player in particular wasn't happy with what Greg Berhalter had in store for him, which led to the eventual decision to not bring him back as the head coach. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you're a U.S. Men's National Team fan that is a fan of the MLS, after you finish this video, you should go check out the video that I made where I talk about the greatest team in MLS history, the LA Galaxy, and the downfall that is happening with that club club. I never discussed this topic on the channel because honestly I felt it was one of the dumbest and most childish things I've ever seen in my history of watching this sport. But if I'm gonna discuss this topic and if it was the right idea to bring Greg Berhalter back to the U.S. men's national team, we have to discuss it. Leading up to the World Cup, Greg Berhalter told U.S. men's national team star boy Gio Reyna that his minutes were gonna be limited at the tournament. A bit surprising to hear from Greg because Gio Reyna was arguably the team's most talented player, but Reyna was coming off many injuries prior to the tournament. So maybe for the three group stage matches, Gio Reyna's skill sets weren't heavily needed. And instead of just trusting in the coach who got them to this point and being mature about it and just simply proving his worth in training or on the field with the ball at his feet, he decided to kick up a fuss in training in the lead up to the start of the competition. Which got so bad, it led to a team vote if they should send him home. Reportedly, it was just a one vote difference that kept him on the team for the tournament. So in the end, Gio Reyna stayed, but it wasn't the end of the story there. I will add, when Reyna did play, bro was pretty shit during the tournament. Nonetheless, the US men's national team narrowly got out of their group, defeating Iran 1-0, with me sitting in a corner pondering the meaning of life. Mission accomplished for Greg Berhalter and the US men's national team. They got out of a very tough group, but were completely outclassed in the round of 16 match against the Netherlands, where I think we saw how there still was a lot of growth and work to be done for this team to be at the level of competing in the latter stages of these tournaments. But you're all probably thinking to yourself, Shion, why didn't the US men's national team stick with Greg Berhalter? Because it seems like he did a pretty good job at the World Cup. Well, you all remember that one player that acted like a crybaby when he didn't get what he wanted, even though he still dropped a stinker in the tournament? Yeah, this guy. 
So after the tournament, the Reyna family made it their number one goal to end Greg Berhalter because their son didn't get enough minutes at the World Cup. Yeah, some really stupid <laughs> shit from this family. The Reyna family decided to blackmail Greg Berhalter for an altercation with his wife that had happened many, many years ago. It really just wasn't necessary to bring up. And with that, the US men's national team basically didn't look to renew Berhalter's contract as the head coach because of this shit show that the Reyna family caused. Because when you look at this through the lens of the US Soccer Federation, their hands were pretty much tied. Because it was either you let go of Greg Berhalter or never call up Gio Reyna. I personally never was the biggest fan of Greg Berhalter, and I felt regardless of the outcome at the World Cup, the US men's national team shouldn't have renewed his contract to continue. But this wasn't at all the fair way to do this. The whole situation rubbed me the wrong way because it proves there's this entitlement from these players and makes US soccer feel like a little bit of a joke. Either way, the Reyna family got what they wanted and Greg was out the door. But at the end of the day, Greg Berhalter could keep his head high. Because even after all the criticism he got, he did win back-to-back -back trophies. And I felt was a decent transitional manager for this team at the time of crisis. But I will also say on the other hand, for the team he did have at his disposal, there was a clear lack of tactics when faced against more challenging opponents. Now that Greg Berhalter is out the door, it was up to the US Soccer Federation to find the right coach to lead this team and take them to the next level for the 2026 World Cup. There were rumors of Jim Curtin, Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira, Jesse Marsh, and even Jose Mourinho. But we all probably felt there was a 0.0000001% chance of that actually happening. From all the names, one man that I and many US soccer fans felt was the perfect man for the job, and that is Jesse Marsh. It was a no-brainer the day Jesse Marsh exploded on the coaching scene in Europe, US soccer fans were salivating over the possibility of him becoming the national team head coach. Just a month ago, it seemed it was a done deal to bring him in, and I thought it was the perfect time to do so. This young team had continental success on top of now having experience at a World Cup. They were ready for a coach that would take them to the next level. And Jesse Marsh fit the bill to a T. I felt this appointment would have made the US men's national team a scary opponent for any national team to go up against. But in the end, Jesse Marsh's agent stated he won't be the next US men's national team coach as he was reportedly asking for too much money and the US Soccer Federation wasn't gonna pay it. And at this point, it seemed the US men's national team weren't sure of which coach to go with. And with rumors of Club America set to hire Greg Berhalter as their new head coach, things were still up in the air for the US men's national team. But then the US Soccer Federation pulled out a masterstroke of doing something an absolutely down bad man would do. They went back to their ex, which they most definitely should have, and Greg Berhalter was back as the US men's national team head coach. And after everything that we have discussed to the point of Greg Berhalter coming back with the national team, should this team have rehired him as the head coach? We have recently seen some of the players be vocal about their gratitude and great relationship with Greg Berhalter. It seemed most of the team liked him a lot as the head coach, so did the federation make the right choice? Absolutely not! And here is why. We have seen in the past, especially for the US men's national team, trying to coach two World Cup cycles for a head coach never works. It just seems the tactics get stale and it always ends badly. And on the other hand, why waste six months just to rehire the same guy? That's just a massive waste of time. It just makes the Federation look like a joke because he obviously wasn't the first choice and they clearly wanted to have a new head coach. So it just sends off the wrong message for all parties involved. But the biggest problem of them all with everything that happened with Reyna during the World Cup, not to mention the bad blood with Ricardo Pepe not being included in the squad when obviously he should have been in it, it could lead to a possible toxic atmosphere within this team which could ruin the great momentum this team has built the past couple of years. We've seen it with many national teams where a toxic moment with one player can absolutely derail a national team. Berhalter has confirmed and stated that he hasn't spoken to any of those players since he left the team, showing he didn't think he was even going to return as the head coach. And it gives off the suspicion that there seems to be burnt bridges with certain players. And on top of all the stuff we just discussed, it's so clear that he's just not the right man for the job anymore. When we look at the US men's national team's performances against teams outside of CONCACAF, Greg Berhalter was only able to get one win, which was a narrow 1-0 win against Iran at the World Cup. We saw he always got absolutely tactically outclassed by better opponents. But the US men's national team wanting to be favorites with this big opportunity of hosting the 2026 World Cup, they needed a coach that would take them to the next level. And unfortunately for this national team, Greg Berhalter just isn't that guy. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Greg Berhalter 
Berhalter fired before the 2026 World Cup. But boys and girls, my opinion only matters so much. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you guys think of Greg Berhalter returning to the U.S. men's national team? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure to smash the like button on today's video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I hope you all have a lovely day.